episode of the Roscoe's Wetsuit Neuro Podcast. I am your host, Toby Passman. On the show with me today, we have a special guest, Merrick Rosenberg. Merrick is the leading personality expert and award-winning best-selling author of Taking Flight and The Chameleon, two books about the power of personality. As a keynote speaker, he shares his entertaining and insightful way of learning about ourselves and others with people all over the world. He has certified more than 500 trainers to share his reimagined approach to personality styles that he refers to as eagles, parrots, doves, and owls. Merrick founded uh, Team Builders Plus in 1991 and Take Flight Learning in 2012. Uh, under Merrick's leadership as uh, CEO, his company has been selected as the New Jersey Business of the Year and named one of the fastest growing companies and best places to work in the Philadelphia area. He received a BA in political communications from George Washington University and an MBA from Drexel University, who recognized him as the Alumni Entrepreneur of the Year. Uh, in addition to all that, Merrick has also worked with more than half of the Fortune, five, uh, Fortune 100 companies in the US and around the world. So Merrick, uh, welcome to the show, glad to have you on. Yeah, thank you, Toby. So why personality? Tell me what, uh, what interested you in personality and why did you decide to kind of like make a whole career around the study of it? I, when I started Team Builders Plus back in 91, it was one of the first team building companies in the United States. And it didn't take long to figure out that a lot of the conflict that was playing out in teams was based on the personalities of the people on the teams. And uh, so I just started to explore and tried to understand what's happening here. Why do some people click with some? Why do they clank with others? And it always seemed to go back to who they are and how they treat each other. And that just led to infusing personality into everything I do. So tell me about these different, uh, the different personality to styles um, that I mentioned that you refer to as eagles, parrots, doves, and owls. Can you kind of break each of those down? Sure. You know, what happened was there's all these personality styles models out there, and it's kind of like this alphabet soup, and I just wanted to make it easier. So, uh, so I'll show you. In fact, I don't even need to teach people. It's pretty intuitive. Like if you thought of a person who was an eagle, you look at somebody and go, all right, that is an eagle. What do you think they would be like? adventurous, bold, outgoing. Yeah, take charge, take charge, direct, confident, exactly. Now, take somebody who's a dove, what do you think the dove would be like? Soft, sweet, calm. Yeah, exactly. And notice how it's already intuitive. It's like, I've always said, if, if anything you have to memorize, you're gonna forget it. But if it's intuitive, you'll always remember it. How about someone who's the owl? When you think of that owl style, what comes to mind? Uh, maybe someone introverted, someone, uh, I don't know, mysterious. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because you don't know what they're thinking because they're right. processing and observing and taking it all in. They're very logical and analytical and questioning. Uh, compare that to the parrot. If you thought of somebody who's, okay, that person has the parrot, what do you think they would be like? Right, the social butterfly, the chatty cathy. Absolutely. But and notice what you did there. It's, I, I didn't teach it to you before this moment. It's just intuitive. And, and what happens is the, once you learn these four bird styles, you meet people and you just instantly get it. You're like, ah, that person is the, is the owl. That person's an eagle. And, and that's when you're able to apply it is if you can recognize it. I like it. So how, can you tell me how, how do these different personality styles fit together, um, you know, say when it comes to uh, in, in a company setting, in a business setting, like how, what, what's the application of these different personality styles? So you can apply it to team dynamics. You can apply it to leadership or sales. Uh, for example, you take all of these styles and what we do is we tend to impose our style on others. So if I'm a parrot manager and I'm creating a culture that I would enjoy, that's very free flowing. Here's your goals. I believe in you. Go for it but you're managing a very structured, process-driven, detail-oriented owl, that owl feels like, well, what are you looking for? What do you want? Uh, or if you're an owl and you're a salesperson and you go into a company and you provide all the statistics and the data and the process and the 
details, but you're talking to an eagle who's just like, what's it going to cost me? And uh, so what happens is I show people that we tend to impose our personality on others. And when we do, it's, it's not serving them. It may be serving us, but it's not getting your, your needs met because they don't get their needs met. So it's teaching people to understand themselves, understand others. How are you impacting the people you work with? Is the, are these different personality styles? Could this help uh, like a company sort of determine their framework as far as who's in which sort of leadership or management position? Perhaps, but what's interesting is it's not like there's one style that is the leadership style. Uh, anybody can be successful. You take an eagle like uh, Jeff Bezos or, or Steve Jobs, self-made billionaires, Bill Gates or uh, Mark Zuckerberg, owls, self-made billionaires. Somebody like a Howard Schultz from Starbucks, very dove, self-made billionaire. Richard Branson, very parrot energy. Once again, it's very successful people. It's hard, it, it, it's hard to say like, okay, that person's going to be very successful or be a great leader because of their style. But what we can say, what we can say is their style, their personality is going to determine how they go about being a leader. So you might want a leader in a role who's very direct and very assertive, or you may want a leader in a role who's going to be more soft-spoken and very empathetic. And so you may select somebody because of their style. Uh, it's not gonna necessarily determine how successful they'll be, but it does determine how they go about being successful. Right. What's your take on like how like gender differences um, you know, impact the different personality styles? You know, it's interesting when you look at the data in, in terms of like these four bird styles, there really isn't a correlation. There's just as many men who are eagles as women who are eagles, just as many men who are doves as women who are doves. But what happens, the culture that we live in or the time period we live in makes us feel like, yes, there are more men who are eagles, which is the stereotype, more women who are doves. That's not true. I think of like my grandfather, dove, Back in the 1970s, my grandmother was an eagle, my grandfather was a dove, which kind of breaks that gender stereotype. And I can remember, remember visiting them, I'd fly down to Florida, and every time we'd leave, they would be waving goodbye to us. My grandfather would have tears in his eyes, and my grandmother's smacking him. She's like, Abe, hey, they're not dying. You're gonna see them again soon. And he's like crying, you know, he's got tears in his eyes. Because back in the, say, the 70s, it wasn't necessarily okay for a guy to be crying, to be the dove. But today, picture a father at a, uh, at, a high, at a school play and he's holding his phone and he's videoing his daughter and he's got a tear in his eye. And you look at that and you go, oh, look how, look how, how nice is that? Because it's more socially acceptable for a man to be a dove today than it was back then. Same thing with a woman. If you are a woman, you are an eagle in the workplace, 1950, How's that working for you? If you dialed up that eagle energy, eh, not so well. Look, today, I'm not saying we're, we're there, but it's at least way better than 1950. And, and so the world in which we live, it determines what we are willing to show the world. So does, how about age? As far as like, are these, if you're an eagle when you're a teenager, are you an eagle the rest of your life? Or are these like fluid personality types? They are fluid. It's absolutely not fixed in place. I met, I meet just as many people, and I've worked with more than 100,000 people with the birds and with the styles, and I meet just as many people who say, I'm in my 50s. When I was, in, when I was a kid, this would have been the same style. It would have been the same graph. You know, they took a profile. Oh my God, I would have been the same. I have just as many people say, I'm totally different. And, and it's, it's like the role that we're in, our life experiences can change our style. Uh, you know, if you have somebody who's maybe they're more of an owl and they're graduating from college and they're in, a, in accounting and they're in the weeds. I mean, they're in receipts and data. But fast forward 25 years ahead into their career and now they're the CFO of a big corporation and they're, now they're looking at cash flow and budgets and finances and resources, much more big picture. Maybe they're more of an eagle now because that's a big picture style versus the more detailed analytical owl that they were as a child. So our style definitely does change over time. Awesome. Um, what, uh, how, how did you, like, what was the process of coming up with these different personality types? Was it uh, like just sort of thinking about people that 
you knew in your life that fit these different categories or other research that you looked at? Like, how did you originally come up with these? You know, what's fascinating about style is that it's been around for thousands of years. You go to the the Chinese, you know, over 2,500 years ago had the elk for, well, really five elements, but they took what I call the dove and split it into its yin and yang component. Uh, Hippocrates uh, had a four style system. The Native Americans on uh, in North America had a four style system. Everywhere you go, I mean, I could probably list off 20 different cultures, religions, philosophers, psychologists who have a four style system. And what's fascinating is it's always the same four. And you say, okay, how's that? How is it always the same four? I just named them eagle, parrot, dove, and owl. Uh, but you always do find the same four. And it does go back to a lot of what's going on in the brain. I mean, there's, there's four brain quadrants, there's uh, uh, the brain structure, there's chemistry. Uh, and we just keep finding the same four because that's those are the main four that we tend to find everywhere we go. Awesome. I, I saw just reading your bio uh, talking about personalities impact uh, on presidential elections. That might be an interesting uh, topic to talk about since we just kind of finished one. Sure. Tell me what, what is, uh, how does personality affect the, the presidential race? So, so I'd, I had studied politics at an undergrad, a political communications degree. So it was always fascinating to me. And just knowing the birds, I observed a pattern and I wondered how far back can I go with this pattern? Uh, and, and what I saw was in presidential elections on the biggest stage, do big personalities beat the more reserved, quieter personalities? And I was like, yeah, that seems to play out, you know, in the 90s and, you know, early 2000s. Eagles and parrots tend to beat doves and owls in presidential elections. So I kept working it back in time, all the way back to 1932. 22 elections in a row. Eagles and parrots always beat doves and owls. The only time a dove or an owl wins the presidency in the United States is if they're going against another dove or owl. Take somebody like, uh, uh, you know, Carter. Okay, Carter is a dove. He won. Yeah, but he was going against Ford, another dove. Then you bring in Reagan, this big smile that electric personality as a parrot and he loses you know george hw bush he's an owl he won yeah he was going against dukakis another owl then you bring in bill clinton's parrot charisma owl loses and so it kept happening over and over and so i wrote a, a book called personality wins who will take the white house and how we know and it's it's really not about politics it's more about how presidential elections really are a big personality contest so people are, are usually drawn to those couple specific personality types when it comes to in general or just when it comes to trying to find like a leader of the country? Well, you know, where it gets really interesting is I wonder if it applies in the Senate, in the Congress, in the House, and it doesn't. Uh, if you look at, at why that is, where does, where does somebody meet your local representative? Maybe at a diner or a coffee shop or in, in a gazebo or a, or a high school gym. The doves and owls are great in that setting. But presidents need to play on the big stage. And that's where that charisma and energy. And you think about like a JFK versus Nixon. JFK, parrot, Nixon, more of an owl. And you watch the two of them together and JFK's energy just, just outshined that owl more thoughtful, logical energy. And so it really only works on for presidential elections. And it only works from 1932 forward. Prior to that, owls and doves won all the time, overwhelmingly. First six presidents were, were owls. Five presidents leading up to the Civil War were all doves. Uh, because where did we learn about presidents back then? In the written media. And you know who sounds very thoughtful and compassionate and logical in a newspaper article? Owls and doves. Once we started to see TV or radio in the early in, in the 1900s, 1930s, and then TV in the 50s and 60s, once it was the electronic media, owls and doves have a harder time. It's, I'm not saying that they are not better presidents. Some of our greatest presidents, uh, universally, uh, you think about Lincoln is considered the single greatest president in U.S. history by presidential scholars, and he was a dove. So I'm not saying their parrots and eagles are better. I'm saying they win. And it's, and it's kind of a cautionary tale. We perhaps should be thinking about that. Maybe we're screening people out 
based on style and is that good and does that have you found does that carry over to any other aspects of life besides just politics i mean in say back to talking about business are the like people the managers who are you know say eagles uh you know are they or parrots are they going to be like favored more by just the people uh by their employees or is there not really that kind of uh does it not really apply yeah it's 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 a great question because things are changing if you were to look back in say the 50s 60s 70s 80s even 90s overwhelmingly we saw eagles who were ceos of big corporations uh, today we are seeing way more of that dove energy of the owl energy of parrot energy uh, and i think we're going to especially see more parrots and doves i think as more and more people enter the workforce who really care about culture who care about are we making a difference in the world well, what style really cares about the culture? They're the doves. And we're, I'm seeing more and more uh, dove CEOs than I've ever seen before. That's super interesting. So, and, and then uh, I guess the first part of the, the question I was trying to ask you was, um, as far as other aspects, other fields besides uh, business or politics, do, do these personality styles apply? And, and how so say like personal relationships yeah styles really your personality plays out in everything you do and so first thing is you're you're probably drawn to a job because of your style i work with nurses i've seen overwhelmingly you see dove owl nurses you go into uh, a law firm you tend to see owls and eagles you go into finance and it you tend to see owls um you know it depends you go into PR and social media, you'll find those human resources, you find the parrots. E Eagles tend to be attorneys, doctors. Um, so we see it in the jobs we pick and we see it in our relationships too. It, the, the old expression, opposites attract, overwhelmingly true. Eagles and doves tend to be married most often. Parrots and owls tend to be married most often. It's like we're drawn to that person who's just so different from who we are. It's like they, that expression, it's like they're yin and yang, or they're the other side of the coin, or they complete me. Uh, and when you, you look at uh, just people in our lives, we are often drawn to people who are very different because they add something else to the equation. If you had two parrots in a relationship, they're fighting for airtime. I mean, imagine a road trip with two parrots. They're, they're having two totally different conversations with each other. <laughs> Whereas if you had a dove and an eagle, the eagle's like, you want to go here for dinner? And the dove's like, sure, if it would make you happy, I'm good. <laughs> and they're happy. <laughs> they really complement each other well. Interesting. And how about as far as uh, like, is it important? Do you find like to in, like, like if people know their personality style, you know, if you've sort of done a workshop with them and you sort of inform them about, you know, you're, you know, you're a dove, you're an eagle, whatever. Does that help them make? better or different choices as far as whether that be with their career or in their personal lives or is it more so this is a way like to classify sort of or categorize people but it doesn't like they are who they are is right. that, does that make I, sense oh yeah I, I will tell you probably the sentence or at least the first part of a sentence i hear more than any other sentence is i wish i knew this before I wish I knew this before I got married. I might have made a different choice. <laughs> I wish I knew this before I became a manager. I would have eliminated a lot of drama. I wish I knew this before I became a parent. Maybe I would have treated my children a little differently. Uh, I wish I knew this before I became CEO. I would have run the company differently. I, I hear that all the time. That the, the, To me, historically, people taking personality assessments has been an act of self-awareness, which is important. The most self-aware people are absolutely the most successful people. They're the happiest people. They put themselves in jobs that where, they're, where they can shine. They put themselves in relationships where they're gonna be uh, connected to that person. Uh, but, but so often people have taken a lot of these assessments over the years and it's just a matter of, oh, that's interesting, but they don't use it. For me, it's a matter of teaching people, how do you communicate with each of the styles? How do you get along with them? And whether it's at home or at work, look, how you talk to somebody is going to play out whether you're a manager or a salesperson, a customer service rep, a nurse, or a spouse or a parent. 
uh, how we communicate impacts everybody. So I find that all the time. People always say, wow, I learned this for work, but really it, it changed my marriage or it changed how I treat my children. Awesome. Uh, do you have a specific like favorite uh, type of audience that you like to work with when, when going through these personality styles? Is it, do you have a, a, a favorite kind of clientele to work with? You know, I really don't. I mean, it's the beauty of what I do. It's, a, it, you know, it, the subtitle of my book, The Chameleon, is, um, uh, you know, you think of it, it's like life-changing wisdom for everyone who has a personality or knows someone who does. <laughs> and, and it's the beauty of talking about something like personality. It's that sometimes you have a group of parrots and they're just hysterical laughing. And, and I, I feed off of that. But sometimes I have a group of doves or owls and they're very quiet. It, you, they hardly say a word and then and you're like were they here but then they walk up to you and they say that was the best talk i've ever heard in my life and i'm like were you at the same talk i was because i i couldn't feel it but i know i understand that they they have a very rich inner experience and you never really know who you're impacting how you're impacting people uh, I, I i love the fact that people are going to take this stuff and bring it home that yeah i tend to work in corporations, I speak at conferences, but the, the questions when people walk up to me after the event are more about their spouse or their kids, even more so than about their coworkers or their boss. How about like introversion and extroversion? Or do those have a similar kind of overlap with these styles we're talking about? Sure. Yeah. Eagles, parrots tend to be much more extroverted. They tend to be more outgoing. They tend to get that energy from the outer world. Uh, doves and owls. Doves are fed by an emotional, a very rich emotional inner world, that connection. Owls are fed by that inner world of dissecting things, taking things apart, the complexity, and then solving it. Uh, so the owls and doves tend to be more introverted. Parrots and eagles tend to be more extroverted. Awesome. Anything uh, that we haven't covered yet when it comes to talking about these different personality styles? Yeah, I think this, the big key is recognizing, are you imposing your style on others? Do you treat people the way you would want to be treated? Or are you treating people the way they would want to be treated? And, and once again, whether that's at work or at home in our personal lives or in our careers, are we treating people the way they would want? And here, the best part about this is, when you treat people the way they want to be treated, they get their needs met. But guess who else gets their needs met? We do. Because they're happy, they're comfortable. And so that would be, if there's anything just to take back, it's think about your style and are you imposing on the people around you? So you're able to sort of teach people to, in addition, recognizing their own per maybe personality style to maybe how to detect that within you know, their spouse or coworkers, friends. Oh, absolutely, and, and I'll show you, you can do it very quickly. Take somebody like, um, like Arnold Schwarzenegger. What style do you think he is? Uh, eagle. Absolutely, but take somebody like maybe Mother Teresa, Princess Diana, Mr. Rogers. Pick a dove. Right, somebody like Robin Williams or Jimmy Fallon or uh, Ellen DeGeneres, what style? Um, like a uh, uh, parrot. Absolutely. You know, it, notice what you're doing though. You know, somebody like, um, uh, I don't know, a, I think I may have mentioned like, or how about uh, Warren Buffett or, you know, Einstein? Um, I don't even, would you call them a dove? Uh, they're more owl-like. Think owl, of like okay. need, uh, information, but, but okay. notice what you're doing, right? The more you, and you've only known these for a few minutes, the more right. you learn the bird styles, you can shake somebody's hand. I, I talk and instantly get, get their style. I taught this to my kids when they were six years old. Uh, we could have a server come by, try, take our drink order, and they're like, okay, she's a parrot. Or, he is an owl in seconds. And, and that's the beauty of what we're doing here is once you really understand the styles, you can meet people so fast, read their style, which then allows you to flex to them. I always talk about be the chameleon. It's about be adaptable, flex to what you're seeing right there in the moment. So that's got to have huge like implications just for um, like, you know, kind of persuasion or leadership, like being able to, to quickly detect the style in which like the people that you're trying to appeal to. And then if you understand what is going to appeal to them really well, 
then you can like specifically like tailor your your pitch you know Absolutely. to them imagine being a salesperson reading your you walk in you're an eagle you're a salesperson and you walk into that person your whole drive there that on your way there you're like i am closing this deal but when you walk in they meet you at the door and they say hi how are you it's so nice to meet you welcome I, did you have a great ride? Would you like some coffee or tea or water? You know what? I want to introduce you to the team, take you on a little tour, show you the facility. Tell me about you. Now, if you're an eagle and you're like trying to close that deal with that dove, how's that working for you? Not good. It's not, it, it's not working. But if as an eagle, I say, oh, okay, I see what's happening here. And I flex into that dove mode and, and I ask questions. To, and I share my life story. And tell me about you. How'd you get into this field? How'd you get into this industry? Industry. Tell me about yourself, and you connect with them. Doves, you're going to make that sale with that dove because you've built a rapport with them. You've created a connection, uh, and if you went in there full steam ahead as an eagle, it's probably not working. So, and you think about leadership. And essentially, leadership is influence. You that can influence others. You're motivating them. You're encouraging them. You're supporting them. You're giving them feedback. And if you can read the style of the people around you, it is going to help you be successful. Awesome. Well, Merrick, I've really enjoyed having you on the show today. Um, if people want to find out more information about your work, where would you direct them to? Uh, they could go to takeflightlearning.com, learn about all the different training programs we do in companies, uh, or you can pick up the Chameleon or Personality Wins on, uh, on Amazon, uh, wherever books are sold online, especially it's easy to get them nowadays and, and Kindle and, and uh, uh, audio versions of them as well. Awesome. Any clothing, closing thoughts related to personality styles or anything that we, we discussed today? Yeah, I would say uh, I'll give you kind of a new thought here and that's use your strengths, but don't overuse them. So in other words, an ego at a healthy level is assertive. Don't drive that dial up too much. That's when it becomes aggressive. The parrot at a healthy level is optimistic dial it up too much, they become unrealistic and scattered. The parrot, caring, compassionate, you can even, even love, if you dial up to an extreme, can be smothering. It's like the grandmother was like, eat, no, 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 I'm full, take it with you, you can afford it. And it, even love at an extreme is too much. Or the owl, how can you have too much accuracy? Well, dial that up and you get the perfectionism and they can't make decisions. So I would say, use your strengths, but don't overuse your strengths. Use them at a healthy level, and that's exactly what's gonna drive your success. And I can see how that could also be super helpful in terms of knowing the personality styles of other people, and then you see them, say in a business setting, a leadership setting, you see your team, like your team members struggling with something, and you identify what, they, you know, what personality style they are, and then you can sort of help correct their they're good or they're bad owl <laughs> behavior right. and, and yeah. you're at work, right? Yeah, you're bringing them back in balance. I always say, look, when you see those behaviors, those pushed it into the red zone kind of a behavior, it's like dialed up too much. That's not something you should get offended by. It's, it should be telling you it's a signal. It's a red flag that says they're under stress because when people are under stress, they push their style into the red zone, they overuse their strengths. So don't be offended. That eagle aggressiveness isn't about you. It's a red flag that tells you they're out of balance. They're experiencing stress. Something's going on there. And then if you're the manager, you talk to them. What's going on? What's happening? You, you, you deal with the, the issue and not the, the symptom that you're seeing. And just one additional question I thought of when it, you know, it comes to stress and, you know, because you work with, you're working in the corporate world uh, with all these companies, do you have any, uh, do you ever give tips or, or have any specific recommendations as far as managing stress, you know, say in the workplace? Are you a fan of meditation or mindfulness? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I've meditated for, for about 30 years. I've, I've taught meditation for a long time. And, and absolutely, it's about really being present to who you're interacting with. You know, be present with yourself. But I always teach the bird from a bird perspective. I say, be present to who you're talking to. That when you communicate to someone in their style, you create that resonance with them. And you know what, guess what, what melts away when you can talk to people in their language? Drama. So just to get rid of stress in the workplace, it's 
reflect their style back to them, treat them how they want to be treated. Their life will feel so much easier because they're being spoken to in a way that feeds them. And then the, the drama in the relationship just melts away. So it's one of the things I hear all the time. We go into a company, wow, it just feels different here. <laughs> There's not as much drama in our interactions, which of course means that their stress level is a lot lower. And so it really just comes down to how do we treat each other? Well, think about their style and treat them the way they want to be treated. Well said. Awesome. Well, Merrick, I really enjoyed having you on the show today. Um, if the listeners enjoyed the show, go ahead and like and subscribe to our YouTube channel, Roscoe's Wetsuit on Neuro. And you can also find the audio versions of the podcast available on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, and just about anywhere else that audio podcasts are available. Um, again, Merrick, uh, thank you so much for coming on. Really enjoyed uh, this uh, discussion today. Oh, thank you so much, Toby. Absolutely.